Well, hello everyone! Dad and I are smelting again. Now, if you followed, if you follow my videos, you will have seen a few weeks ago a series of four or five videos where we were up the blue trip mine playing around. And in one of those videos, Dad and I were running the gold cube with the trommel and doing some soil sampling. And we found some pretty nice gold. Some really nice gold. We took all of that gold that we found and removed all that we could remove, took the concentrates from it and said we would smelt them at a later date. Well, this is the later date. We have been playing around with smelting all weekend here. And Dad's trying to light the forge right now. We've been playing around with, uh, no, don't, don't light it. Don't light it right now. We've been playing around with uh, smelting all weekend here. And it is our turn to run the soil sample mixture and see what it has in it. Dad has it all mixed up somewhere with the fluxes. Where'd it go, Dad? There it is. He's got it all mixed up with the fluxes. We have the crucible preheated. We are going to smelt out those cons and see how much gold we can recover. We pulled out 0.16, no, 0.63 grams of the big pickers, the, the bigger stuff. And then we're going to smelt out the rest and see what we have in total of that soil samples for the day. So our plan for this run of the smelter is to see how much we can get out of the rest of the cons of that soil sample day run. Let's see how it goes. Now Dad has the uh, mix already mixed up with the fluxes, the cons of the fluxes. We roasted the cons before we mixed them up to make sure that there weren't any sulfides left in it. We burned off all the sulfur. That way we got a neutral ore, makes it easier to, to smelt. Easier we, to flux. Easier to, yeah. An easier, simpler flux is needed. We have preheated this, so it's not going into a, a cold crucible. And we are ready to start loading it. Lid on top. We can light her up. Now we do have a bit of time to uh, kill here because the smelting process does take about 40 minutes to do. 20 minutes at a lower temperature, then raise it up for another 20 minutes before we can pour it out into our conical molds. Obviously I'm not going to show you 40 minutes of that. So we'll see you in 40 minutes. Well we're killing 40 minutes. I uh, need to say, uh, give a good shout out and a thanks to Pat from Quick Kiln for supplying us the KK8 kiln and the little Coupel kiln for doing this smelting. And also to Dave from 911 Metallurgist for setting this whole thing up between Pat and I. Thank you guys. This has been fun. Forty minutes sure is a long time. Whew. Well, while we're waiting, thanks to all my patrons out there for supporting me. Without your pledges, it would be very hard for me to make these videos for all you guys out there to watch. If you guys would like to become a patron, there will be a link at the end of this video. Click on the link, it'll take you off to the Patreon site where you can pledge and help me out in making these videos for everyone.
Well, we poured the smelt into the conical mold, and then we had to go up to the campfire and have s'mores. We're out camping with family right now. So things are all nice and cooled off. Uh, it's been probably an hour since we poured this. Uh, you can see some of the glass on top is flaked off and chipped off. We can pour it out now into our... No, 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 no. The, uh... Right behind you. There we are. Our vessel. Give it a little tap to break off the prill off the bottom. And pour it out into our little pan here. And avoiding all the sharp edges. There is the prill. It's going to take a little bit of work to knock off the rest of the glass, the slag. But it is already to coupel. So I've preheated the coupel. I've hammered the prill into a cube and she's ready to go. Fire up the coupel kiln. Get this going. So there's the bead in the coupel. Now the coupel is cooled somewhat. I still have to be careful not to touch it because it still burned me in really good. So I've broken it off already because they stick pretty good. I've broken it off and I'm going to take it over to the scale here. Let's turn the scale on. Zero it out. And see what this bead weighs. Now remember, we pulled 0.63 out of this batch already. So, 0 0.16, 17, so 0 0.7, 0 0.8. We pulled out 0.8 that day from that soil sampling. Now the fact that there is a very small amount after we've, re we've recovered all of the easily recoverable stuff, I would say it's not worth smelting this to get the last little bits if we were just rec recovering that for fun. I would say just get the amount we can pull out easily and leave it at that. Because that's a lot of work to get. Now 0.14. And there it is, the cute little bead of gold we got from smelting and cupelling those soil sample cons. And of course, there could be some silver content in there as well. sampling that we did at the blue chip mine. We smelted the cons out. We got another 0 0.14, 0 0.17 in there. Adding it with what we've taken out already comes out to roughly 0.8 of a gram for running the gold cube for a couple hours at the blue chip mine. We're starting to get some real good information about what the gold is like up there, where it is, what we can recover. It is intriguing. Hope you enjoyed watching us smelting and compelling the materials there. If you did, please give this video a like, share it if you want to, and please leave me a comment. Say whatever you want in there. I love reading your comments and I will reply to them. Thank you to my patrons one more time for supporting me in my endeavors here. 
and until the next video, whenever that will be. As you can see, we're doing a next one right away here. I'm not sure when that one will be out though. So until then.